I know you're probably tired, but let's do one more thing. Let's make it so when we type something here and there are no results, let's make it so this appears as an option we can create. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Headless UI and copy the combo box example. It's this one right here. Let's hit the copy button, paste it in, and then what I want to do is move the script at the start of the file. This is just a preference. If we take a look at this component, we have a bunch of imports. Some are from view, others are from headless UI and here icons. We then have an array of people representing the combo box options. So these right here. We have a reactive value for the currently selected option and the reactive value for the query. The query is whatever you type in the search box. Finally, we have a computed value which checks the query and filters the people array. Moving on to the template, we have an additional wrapper we no longer need, so we can remove this. Then we have the combo box with the currently selected option. We have the combo box input, that's where we type our search term. And this displays the person name, so this Wade Cooper here. And then on change, we set the query value. Then we have a transition root component that resets the query when we leave. Basically, when we type something in, and then we click outside, this thing resets the query to an empty string. Then we have a VIF that checks the length of the filtered people and displays nothing found if there are no results. And finally, we have a V4 that loops through the array and renders the combo box options. Here we have key, value, and then some slot props to style the selected and active state of the option. So this green background will be the active state and this check mark will represent the selected state. Now, what we want to do is make this component reusable, because right now everything is hard coded. We'll start by renaming people to something like options. And then person will become option. Let's rename filtered options as well to have an uppercase O. And then we also want to rename the properties on the options to something more generic. We'll have value and label. Let's make sure we rename everything. Let's search for .id, so this will become .value. And I think we're done. Yeah. Next up, we want to move these options and have them received as a prop. So let's define the props. I'll do const props equals define props we'll have options, which needs to be an array. And then we'll grab these, move it here, and pass it as a prop. And of course, we no longer have options, we have props.options. Next up, we need to make it possible to add a vModel here. So let's do vModel user, and I'll create this as a reactive value. Let's import ref from view. And then here we need to accept model value as prop, which will be an object. And we no longer need the selected reactive value. We can just go here and say model value equals props.model value. And then listen to the update model value event which will give us the selected value, which we can then pass it to the parent using our own update model value event. So we'll do emit update model value and pass it the value. Of course, we also need to define the emits. So we'll go here and say define emits array and paste that in. Now, if we refresh and open the view dev tools, we have user here, which is currently undefined. And then when we select something, we have the correct value. And that was our first step. We now have a reusable combo box component that works with a static options array. Let's make it so it also works with async data coming from a server. But before we get started, I wanted to tell you something. I know this video is on YouTube, but it's not free. No, 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 no. It's not free. If you watch this video and find it useful, you have to like it and then subscribe to the channel. There's just no other way. 
Consider this to be our gentleman's agreement. You subscribe to the channel, I keep making useful videos, gentleman's agreement. The first thing we'll do is add another prop called load options. This will be a function in charge of making the HTTP request and setting the options. Now we need to call this function whenever the query changes, so let's add a watcher for that. And here we'll check for props.loadOptions, and if we have it defined, we'll call it by passing it the query and the callback that will receive the results and set them as options. But right now options is a prop, so we cannot do that. But what we can do is create a local version of the options. So we'll do const options equals ref and we'll set props.options as default. Then down here we'll do options.value equals results. And of course that means we need to replace props.options here with options.value. Let's refresh, we have an error. Watch is not defined, let's import that. And there we go. Let's go ahead and define this load options prop in our parent. We can do something like function load users will receive the query and the callback, which I'll name set options. And then here we'll make our request. I already have an endpoint returning some users. We transform the response to JSON and then we can access the results. Let's just console log them for now. Next up, we need to take this function and pass it as load options. Go in the browser, refresh, open up the console, type something in, and we have an error saying cannot read properties of undefined reading filter. That's because we no longer pass the options prop and that was our default. So here we now have undefined and then down here we have a filter made on undefined. So we need to set a default value for props options. Here we'll set type to array and the, then default will be a function returning an empty array. Refresh, type something in and we are now good. These are our results. We have ID and name. We'll need to convert these to value and label. So we'll go back here where we have the results and we'll do set options. We'll take the results, map through them. We'll have user here and we'll return value equals user.id, label equals user.name. Refresh, type something in and here are the results. So to recap, we are watching the query and whenever that changes, if we have a load options function, we call it by passing it the query and the function that will be used to set the results whenever they are ready. One advantage of doing it this way is that we can now manage our loading state internally rather than receiving a prop. So we can go here and say const is loading equals ref false. This will be the default. And then before we are calling the function, we'll set that to true. And of course, once we set the results, we'll set it to false. Now we can go in our template and it no longer makes sense to display nothing found while we are loading. So I'll remove this and replace it with and is not loading. And of course, we can add one for the loading state. So the if is loading, we'll display loading. And then we need to hide the options while we are loading. So I'll wrap this within a template tag and only display them if we are not loading. So the if not loading. Let's go in the browser, refresh, open up the console, slow down the network so we can see the loading state. Type something in, we have loading, and then the results. Let's go ahead and tackle our next problem, which is, if I open this select box here, we have nothing found. That's because even if we have a loading function, that is only called when we are searching. So whenever the query changes. To make it execute when the component is loaded, we can go here and pass another object with immediate set to true. So this will be called immediately once the component is loaded. Now, if I refresh, click here, we already have the results. The next problem, here we have Gregorio, Josephine and Elta. If I type, for example, S, 
Samantha here and click on it. We have it here, but then if I go and open the options, it's gone. So what we need to do is whenever we select an option, we need to make sure it's in the options list. Otherwise we need to add it. So we'll go here and say, if we have props.modelValue and options.value.sum, here we'll have an option and we'll check for return o.value equals equals props.modelValue dot value. And this needs to be a negation. So if we have a selected value and we cannot find it in the options array, we need to add it. So we'll do options.value on shift to add it at the start of the array, props.modelValue. So now if we go here, refresh, type something in, well, let's search for Samantha, click on it, and then open the select again. Here it is right here. Unfortunately, we are not done. We still have a problem. If we go here and we see Gregorio, and let's say we search for it and select it, open up the list, Gregorio is here, but is no longer appearing as being selected. The reason that happens is when we are searching, we receive a set of results. And then remember when we click outside, the query is reset to an empty string, which triggers this whole thing again. And that is good because we want to load options again. But the problem is every time this loads, a different array appears with different objects. And in JavaScript, this does not equals this. So even if we have value one and object value one, these two are not the same. However, the good news is if we go to headless UI and go to the combo box API, we see that we have this by prop and we can use this to compare objects by a particular field. So we can go here down to our combo box and say by, and I want to compare the objects in our options array by the value property. So now if I refresh, type in Gregorio, click on it, open up the select, here's Gregorio being selected, which is what we wanted. I know you're probably tired, but let's do one more thing. Let's make it so when we type something here and there are no results, let's make it so this appears as an option we can create. To do that, we'll have to create a computed property. We'll go here and say const query option computed. We'll check for the value of the query. And if that's an empty string, we'll just return null. Otherwise, we'll return an object representing an option that needs to be created. So we can do something like missing equals true. And this will tell us that we need to create this option and then label will be query dot value. Now we can use this to render a combo box option. So let's scroll down where we have the V4 right here. Let's copy this. We no longer need the V4. We don't need a key. The value will be query option. We no longer need to style the select version. We only need the active one. I think we can remove everything here and we'll just say create and add in query option dot label. But of course, here we need to add a if, saying that if we have a query option and there are no results, so if filtered options dot length equals to zero, or we can just add a bank here, then we render the query option. Let's refresh, type something in, nothing found, and we have create Constantine. So let's add another condition here. So if filtered options length is zero and is not loading, and there is no query option, display nothing found. Okay, so let's do Constantine, and here it is. Of course, when we click this, something needs to happen. Let's go ahead and turn this handler into a function. Let's call it handle update model value. 
let's define it here. We'll receive the selected option. And let's emit the value which will be selected. And of course, we need to create this. So where we are defining the emits, we'll do const emit equals define emits. So this should work the same as it did before. But now we have access to the selected and we can do stuff with it. So if selected missing, then we need to create the option. And we'll do that just like we did with loading the options. So we'll have a create option prop, which will be a function responsible to create the option and set it as selected. So now we can go here in our parent component and create function, create user, which will receive the option and the callback, let's call it set selected. Here we'll make a post request using fetch to this endpoint of mine, we'll send in the name, which is option.label. Then we'll convert the response to JSON, and then here we'll get the result, which will be a user. Of course, we can then do set selected, and we'll create a new object with value equal to user.id and label equal to user.name. Let's grab this and pass it as create option. Now that we have a create option prop, we can go back to our combo box component and check for it. So if props.create option and we have a selected that is missing, then we'll do props.create option. We'll pass it the option which is selected and then we'll grab the result which will be an option and set it. But in our case, set it just means emit the model update. So here we'll do emit update model value option. Let's save and test it out. Let's say XXX create, hit enter. The value is here. Let's refresh and look up for XXX. And here's our created option. Of course, we can also do is loading here and set it to true. And then here will be false. And we also need to add some additional checks in our template. So we can only display this if we have a function that creates options. And that will also be the case here where we are displaying nothing found. We can only display this if we don't have a create option function. So if not props.create option. Okay, I think we are done. So let's do one more check. We have a comma box that uses load option props and create option. Let's do one with options. Let's say load user and user. So I'll go here and create another one, load user. Refresh, this one searches the server. We have some error here, let's increase the Z index. So where's that? We have absolute here, let's set it to 50. And there's the problem is gone. So let's say Samantha. And then we have the other combo box that uses a static array. Let's search for Helen, hit enter. And that was it. We don't have labels, errors, hints, and stuff like that. I just wanted to cover the async part, loading the options from the server, and the creation of new options. You'll find the code snippets in the description, but also keep an eye on variant UI. I'll be updating that soon to include the more complete combo box field. Please don't forget about our gentleman's agreement, like the video, share it, and subscribe, goddammit.